Hey everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and today I'm going to be presenting a beginner's tutorial on Google Docs. Before I get started, I want to just run down a couple of the advantages of Google Docs. Um, the ability to carry your documents wherever you go. So all of your documents are hosted online with Google Docs, so you can go to any computer in the world and have access to all of your documents. That means no more emailing documents to yourself, no more using flash drives, they're wherever you are, your documents are with you as long as you have an internet connection. The other big advantage to Google Docs is the ability to collaborate and share. So you can actually collaborate on documents in real time. So I can be working on the same document with somebody on the other side of the world and I can see the changes that they're making to that document as they type them. Um, so those are the two main benefits to Google Docs. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you have a Gmail account or a Google account, you have access to Google Docs. If you don't have a Google account, you're going to have to create one. You can do that at gmail.com or docs.google.com. But once you have your Google account, you'll see that there's a Documents tab up here in the top. Um, if you click on that, it's going to take you to your Google Docs. Now, this tutorial is going to cover an overview of Google Docs. I'm going to talk about creating some documents, organizing our documents, sharing our documents, importing documents, exporting documents. When you first get into Google Docs, sometimes this page can look a little bit overwhelming for people. It's very new. It's something that you haven't seen before if you haven't used Google Docs. So I actually like to jump right into creating documents, look at something that looks familiar to us, and then as we create documents, we'll see how this home page kind of works and then I'll talk about that a little bit more. So to get started, how do we create some documents in Google Docs? Well, you may have noticed there's a big red create button over here on the left. If you click on it, you have seven options. But you can see you have document, which is equivalent to a Word document, presentation, which is equivalent to PowerPoint, spreadsheet, equivalent to Excel, forms is for doing surveys and questionnaires and stuff like that, drawings is for diagrams, and then collections are folders that you can actually store your documents in. So let's go ahead and let's just click on document. First thing you want to notice is that it opens in a new tab. So I still have access to my main documents page back here. But the document I'm working on is in its own tab. And you can see it looks pretty similar to Microsoft Word. We've got all of our lists up here with options that we can you know, copy, paste. Um, you can change your document view if you want, different things like that. And then we've got our toolbar with all of our other options such as different fonts. Um, styles, different font sizes, bold, italics, underline. To get started, the first thing you want to do is uh, Google Docs has an autosave feature that saves your document literally every second. If you look, there's actually no place for us to hit save because it saves faster than we can manually do it. However, to start that process, the first thing you have to do is give your document a title. So you'll see up here it says Untitled Document. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a title. I'm going to call this January 2012 Test and then I'm going to hit return. So you'll see right away, now is the title, and boom, it says it's saving. Give it a second, and all changes saved. So that, that problem of having to save your documents or losing documents because your computer dies, that's over too with Google Docs. Uh, my computer died right now, this document I would be able to access, even though there's really nothing in it. If it, it did have stuff in it, I'd be able to access it. So I'm just going to type a line right here. This is a test. And then just to show you, if I use some keyboard shortcuts, I can bold, italics, underline, I can go ahead and I can change the font color to whatever I want. So really, most of your options you have in Microsoft Word are the same in Google Docs. Now, if you're a real power user of, of word processing systems, there might be a few things in Word that you can't find in Google Docs, but for the most part, it's all here. So you can see you've got your bulleted lists, your numbered lists, you've got your margins, indents, pretty much everything. So that's our first document, okay? I'm going to go ahead and just close out this tab because it saves automatically. Close out the tab. Now, first of all, notice we're back at our home page here and see that January 2012 test is now at the top of my documents list. We're going to talk about this list a little bit more in a few minutes, but first I'm going to just go ahead and create a spreadsheet. So I'm going to go back over to the Create button and I'm going to hit Spreadsheet. Notice again, opens in a new tab. First thing I'm going to do, give it a name so it starts auto-saving. So I'll call this Spreadsheet Test 2012 and then I'm going to hit OK. So you can see, this screen looks very similar to Microsoft Excel. Uh, just to show you an example, I'm going to throw some numbers in here, and I'm going to do a formula just to show you that it works pretty much the same. So I've got a random list of numbers, could be anything, and you'll notice that my formula bar, my functions bar, is right up here. And it's the same symbol as, as it is in Excel. So if I click on it, you can see I have different options for the functions that I want to do. So if I just want to do a sum function, I'm going to click sum, and then just like Excel, I'm going to select the area that I want to sum. So I want to sum up these cells uh, A1 through 8, hit enter, and you can see there's my sum. 
in cell A10. If I change one of these numbers up here, to 8 to 78, you'll see that my sum changes respectively. So it works pretty much the same as Excel. If you do manual formulas and functions, it works the same too. So if I wanted to sum manually, I could say equals sum, open bracket, select the area I want to sum, and hit return. And you see I get the same answer. So that works as well. You can do borders, you can change your colors, you can also change your data types. So if these were currency, I can go ahead and select them, hit currency, and you'll see it changes respectively. Um, so again, just like the word processing version, it's got almost all the same stuff as you have in uh, Excel. You can also do uh, graphs and charts. Uh, let's see where it is in here. You can do your sorting through here, so just like in Excel. And here we go. We can insert charts if we wanted to. So I'm not going to give you a lesson on how to use a spreadsheet program, but you can take pretty much all your knowledge that you've got gained in Excel, and you can bring it in here to Google Docs. So that's how we create a spreadsheet. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Now let's talk about a couple um, other features other than creating documents here in, in Google Docs. Let's talk about uploading documents because you probably have a lot of documents on your computer that you might want to put in Google Docs. It's a good backup and you'll have access to it from anywhere in the world. So in order to upload a document to Google Docs, all I have to do is click on this button here next to create, which is the upload button. So I'm going to select it, and you'll see that I could actually upload a whole folder if I wanted to. So if you've got a bunch of documents that you want to back up, you can upload folders at a time instead of having to do it individually. But I'm just going to upload an individual document, so I'm going to click on Files. And I'm going to navigate to the document I want to upload. I've got this Call of Duty review that I wrote uh, a while ago that I'm going to upload. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to hit Enter. And you'll notice first this Upload a Settings box appears. Uh, basically, I'll tell you right off the bat, you don't need to change any of these settings. But just to let you know what they mean is the first checkbox is saying, yes, I want to convert my documents into Google Docs format. So uh, you can upload documents without converting them, but you won't be able to actually edit them. You can only view them. So if you convert it, we can actually edit them online. So you're usually going to want to do that. The second checkbox is asking if you want to convert text from PDF documents, which generally you're not going to want to do. If you're uploading a PDF, you're going to want it to be a PDF. So you can pretty much hit Start Upload every time this box pops up. So you'll see this Upload status box appears over here. It already says that it's complete and converted. And you'll see in my Documents list, I now have a Call of Duty doc. If I click on it, it opens up in a new tab, just like before. You can see here's a document that I created in Word. Um, it's now in Google Docs. I could go ahead and I could, you know, add content to the document, just like in Word. So, boom, our document's uploaded. Now, let's talk about the opposite. What if we want to download a document? What if you want to share a document with somebody and they don't have Google Docs? Well, what we can do is, I'm going to close this upload box. You'll see this document in my documents list. If I want to download that, I can right-click on it, and I can go right down here to this download option. Select it. Ask me what format I want to download it as. You can see we've got a bunch of different options. This is another great feature of Google Docs is that it converts to OpenOffice. It converts to HTML, PDF, Microsoft Word. Um, so generally, you're going to want to do Microsoft Word. So you click that. You click Download. Ask where you want to put it. I'm going to call this you know, Call of Duty 2, I guess, on the desktop. And boom. Downloads, you can see it's in Word format. Um, I could open this up for you right now and prove to you that it converted fine. Uh, I'm not going to because I know it did. <laughs> and I want to save some of your time. So um, that's how you can download a document. Now let's also talk about sharing documents. It's slightly different than uploading and downloading documents. If you have a friend that also uses Google Docs, you can simply share a document with them and then you can do the real-time collaboration that I spoke about earlier. So if I wanted to share this Call of Duty doc, I could just right-click on it, go to Share, then I just hit Share again. When I do that, a box pops up and it says, who currently has access to this document? Currently, just me. It's private, and then I have access. If I want to add somebody, I can go ahead and enter the email address. So if I add my other email address, antonay4 gmail.com, I add that in there, and then I can choose whether the person can have edit permissions, comment permissions, or just view. So generally, if the person is going to make changes, give them edit. If they're not going to make changes, just give them view so they don't change anything by mistake. So I hit edit. Um, yeah, generally if you want to share a document, you're going to want to notify them, so you keep that checked. And then you just hit share and save. And now I just received an email at antonay4 at gmail.com saying, Anson Alexander has shared a document with you. If I go into my Google Docs section of my Google account at antonay4 at gmail.com, this document will appear in the top of my list as well. And you can see it now has a shared tag next to it, letting me know that it's also shared. So that's how you can share documents with other Google Docs users. Now let's talk about the opposite. Maybe you've got a friend who you need to share a document with, but they don't use Google Docs. All you have to do is right-click on the document, go to Share, 
instead of hitting sh this second share this time, we're going to hit email as attachment. Different box pops up, similar to before. First option, we get to choose our format. So generally, you're going to do either Word or PDF, although you might find use for these other formats. I'm going to choose Word. And then just like before, we can go ahead and enter the email address, antona4 at gmail.com. We can add a subject and message if we want to. Go ahead and hit send. This time, they will receive an email with a Microsoft Word document attached that they can then download, open up in Word, and edit if they want to. So that's how you can share documents with people who don't necessarily use Google Docs. So now we've talked about creating some documents. We've talked about sharing documents, uploading, downloading documents. Let's talk real quick about managing this screen right here um, because I kind of avoided that in the beginning, but we're at the point now where we can talk about it. So first of all, you've noticed that as I've been working with some documents, they've just been piling up here in this home screen. Uh, well, basically, all your documents in this screen are sorted by last modified, uh, which actually works out really well because if I create a document and then two months goes by and I don't do anything with it, it's slowly falling down this list, falling down this list. Now, let's say one of my friends or collaborators makes some updates to that document. Well, if, it's, if this is an order of when it was created, I'm not going to know any updates were made because it's going to stay at the bottom of my list. But because it's sorted by last modified, as soon as somebody else makes changes to that document, it's going to jump to the top of my list, and I'll be able to see that changes were made. You'll also notice that this test2 document here is bold, while the other ones aren't. What that means is, is that changes have been made to that document since the last time I opened it. So even if you yourself modify a document, it's going to jump to the top of your list. But it's not going to be bold, because you were the person that made the last changes. But if somebody else makes changes to a document, two things are going to happen. It's going to jump to the top of your list, and it's going to be bold, so you know that been modified and it wasn't modified by you, it was modified by somebody else. Um, so this is the home screen. Now one thing that eventually happens is once you have a bunch of documents, this screen gets kind of full and this list gets kind of convoluted. So one thing that's important to note is that there's also an all items view in Google Docs which is always going to have all of your documents. It's just like the all mail folder in Gmail. If the document is not in the all items section, it doesn't exist in your Google Docs. So what that means is you can go ahead and go back to home and you can start getting rid of some of the clutter. So let's say these test one and test two documents, you know, I want to keep, I don't want to delete them, but I don't need them in my home screen. If I want to find them, I can do a search for them up here at the top or I can go to my all items section. So what I can do is I can select them in my home screen and I can right click and I can say don't show in home. When I do that, those two documents disappear from my home screen, but if I go to all items, you can see there they are, or if I went up here and I searched for test one, you see, boom, there it is, it's right there. So still easy to find your documents, but you can kind of reduce your clutter. Think of this home screen as your inbox for your Google Docs, all right? Now, one more thing I want to talk about real quick before I finish up here is creating a collection, okay? Yeah, you're going to hide things from your home screen, and they're going to go in your all items folder, but eventually your all items folder is going to get really full. So in order to help manage your organization, you can create folders or collections as they're called in Google Docs. In order to do that, you're simply going to go back to the Create button, and this time we're going to hit Collection. When I do that, box pops up, very similar to creating a label in Gmail if you're a Gmail user. I'm going to ask you what you want to name it. I'll call this Jan 2012 Collection, and I'm going to hit Enter. And you'll see right away, over here in My Collections, I now have a January 2012 Collection. So I could go back to my home, I could take this call of duty doc, and I can just click and drag. I can drag it right over to this collection. Boop. You'll see right away, it now has a tag next to it that says it's in that folder. If I click on that folder, there's my document. Now alternatively, you can organize documents by right-clicking on them and hitting organize. And then you can pick and choose exactly which folders you want to put them in. So maybe you want to put this in two folders. Go ahead, hit apply changes. Okay, so now um, that document is in multiple folders. You can see my Call of Duty document, since it's in the January 2012 collection, I might not need it in home anymore. So I can go ahead and right click, say don't show in home, but if I need to find it, I can go ahead and click on my test um, January 2012 collection. One thing that happens that you may have noticed is as I create collections, they show up in my home screen, which to me is kind of annoying. To me, my collection should be on the left and my document should be in my home screen. So what I always do is right when I create a folder, I select it, or in this case, I'm going to select all three of these folders. I right click and I say, don't show in home because my folders are on the left. I don't need them repeated over here. Just a little nuance of uh, Google Docs that, that kind of annoys me. Uh, but other than that, you know, we've kind of gone over the basics. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, uh, either on YouTube or on AnsonAlex.com, and I'll try and answer them as best and as fast as I can. Other than that, I look forward to hearing your feedback, and we'll see you next time on AnsonAlex.com.